Hey y'all, it's Laura and welcome back to a DIY crafty video. This one's a little bit different, not scrapbooking, but it is using scrapbook paper, and <laughs> some scrapbook supplies, as well as a lot of other supplies. But we're going to be decorating some of these paper mache letters. Now I have seen these in numerous craft stores online and in person and have always wanted to give them a go. So I thought, you know what? I don't want to just do the same thing for each letter. Nah, I'm going to get bored. I want something different. I want something a little bit wild. And so I came up with five different ways you can decorate these craft letters, and I'm going to show you how. Now to get started, I took all five letters and I have put a liberal amount of gesso onto the paper mache. The reason I'm doing this is it seals in that paper and protects it from everything else that I'm going to be adding on top of these letters because paper is prone to tearing. And I need this to be not only waterproof, but also strong. And then I went in with a coat of Dilutions white paint, but any white acrylic paint would do the job. I just like Dilutions because it's very opaque, which means it doesn't take more than one coat usually. And I only used one coat to completely cover the letter and make them nice and white. So once I add things on top, you will only be able to see little bits of white peeking out, but the sides and the bottom will be white. So when it's hanging on my wall, they will all have white showing on the sides and then the decorations on the top alone. A nice thick coat of white acrylic paint just makes it feel crisp, makes it feel fresh, and I really, really like that kind of clean look. Now we're gonna make these not so clean in a minute, but it's nice that they all had the same color in the background, and if it was peeking through, I'd rather it be the crisp, clean white as opposed to the craft paper instead. So craft just isn't my jam. So once I've painted this one completely white and allowed it to dry, please don't forget that step, I'm going to use some 3D matte gel medium from Prima. And this is kind of important for this particular edition. These Prima flowers are big, they are thick, and they are kind of heavy. So you need to use something like this gel medium that's really thick, heavy bodied, that's gonna help hold those flor florals into place. Now, a lot of people would use hot glue, but in my experience, hot glue does not last long term and these flowers will start falling off. Whereas matte gel medium, this really thick gel, really works well to keep them in place for a long time. I have had these hanging on my wall for at least a week. So I can attest, this did work really, really well. I love this stuff. I use it a lot in my art journaling and just in general craft projects and I do really like it. Now, the 3D Prima Gel is kind of, in my mind, the super heavy body stuff. It is very thick and it does a beautiful job in this application. But for most craft projects, a simple matte gel medium would do the job. In this case though, we are putting on some really heavy embellishments here with these florals. And so that extra gel, that extra body to it really does help to keep it affixed to the letter. Now I am starting with the larger florals to make sure I have room for them. And then I'll come in and fill in the gaps with the medium and then smaller and smaller sizes. And that way I know I've gotten the big gorgeous florals on here. I've spread out the colors the best I can and I can save those smaller ones for filling in gaps or if they don't all get used, it's much easier to pop one of those tiny flowers on a project than it is some of these bigger ones. And so I thought, let's get as many of the bigger ones on here as possible. And then we'll see how many of the teeny tiny florals we can squeeze in between. This is a beautiful way to use up paper flowers as well. If you're like me and had a whole ton of paper flowers back in the day, this is a great way to use them up. Attaching them to the letters makes for this beautiful textural 3D look, but you're also using up a supply that maybe you're not using in your other crafting or other scrapbooking type projects at this point. And I think that's awesome when you can repurpose something that maybe isn't your favorite thing anymore. This one may be my favorite. It turned out pretty good, I have to say. Now I've gotten most of the florals in there, but I wanted to leave in a little bit here showing you how there's just some little gaps here and there in between the larger florals. And I grabbed just teeny tiny little floral buds that I had picked up somewhere quite a while back 
and just start tucking those in to the gaps. And that way this has a mix of the sizes. Like when you look at a bouquet of flowers, it's not just big flowers. I mean, it could be, but they generally do try to mix in some smaller florals. And when they're arranged, they don't have all the big ones together. They don't have all the small ones clumped together. They're mixed and intermingled with each other. And I love that look. And that's really what I was going for here was a big bouquet of flowers just held together onto this R. <laughs> so here's a quick close up of how the R turned out. I really like it. I think it's a lot of fun and I love that it has a ton of colors in it. Now on to the next letter. Now this is the letter A and this one was super quick and easy. This is probably the fastest way to decorate these letters and that is using scrapbook paper. So again with the matte gel medium, but this time just a very thin layer over the top of the letter, pressing down a piece of scrapbook paper onto the top, giving it just a moment to dry and then flipping it over and cutting it out. Now I used a craft knife for two reasons. One, it was quick and easy. So getting scissors in close enough to the letter, especially in that center section would have been a bit tricky. And using the craft knife just made it easier for me. Now, one of the things I did purposefully with this letter is that I cut very roughly. I was very rough with it because I wanted to have that kind of a ripped texture on the outside of the letter. Because this one was so quick and easy and simple, I wanted to give it some character of its own. Each of the letters has a completely different look and style to it, and that's fully intentional. The entire word spells out artsy and I was hoping to give it kind of an artsy look. So different aspects of art and crafts and how you can use those different materials on these letters. So it kind of is all part of the grand scheme, if you will. But yeah, quick craft knife cutting, no problem. Roughing up the edges a little bit so they look a little bit torn, a little bit distressed. And I really, really like how this one turned out. Now you may have noticed that I've left the little plastic hanging tag on the back of this letter. That is fully intentional. I'm not taking that off. That is what I use to hang my letter on the wall. Now you could install some sort of a bracket or something on the back if you'd like, if you prefer not to see that clear tag. For me, because my wall is painted green, you can't see that at all. <laughs> it comes through that clear tag and you cannot see it. Now I am gonna add another layer of that matte gel medium on top of the letter that's gonna help seal it in and protect that scrapbook paper so that hopefully it will not get damaged in the future. It will not wear and continue to rip <laughs> as it is distressed on the edges. I also want to mention there's a very good reason I'm not using Mod Podge in particular. And the reason for that is that Mod Podge stays tacky. It does not dry smooth and uh, sleek. It has a tacky feel to it, and that is going to let dust stick to your finished product. You do not want that to happen. So Mod Podge is great as an adhesive, but I do not use it as a top layer because it does not stay sleek and clean. It gets really sticky over time. Next, we're gonna use some glitter because I had to do at least one glitter letter. Now for this one, I was really impatient. So uh, keep that in mind. I had some difficulty opening up my glitter at first and my matte gel medium kind of dried on me. <laughs> <laughs> in that process. So as you can see, I've missed some spots here. I did make sure to do my glittering onto a piece of paper so that I could quickly dump it back into the container and continue to use more. And then I came in with some more matte gel medium to fill in the spots that I missed. And I will go ahead and dump that glitter back on top and it evens out quite nicely. Now, I do recommend that for this one in particular, you let it sit. Pour that glitter on top and just let it sit for quite an amount of time and it should work just fine. Now, then you can tap it off. As you can see, I still got impatient, was brushing off the extra <laughs> while it was drying. But overall, this one came out really, really cute and it was really, really easy to do if it did take a while though. It did take a while, I will say that, but I think it came out really, really cool. All of that glitter on there, yes. Make sure you shake off all the extra of that though, otherwise it will flake off. I did go back outside and spray this down with hairspray 
on top to help seal it in a little bit. That's not a long-term fix, but until it was fully dry, I didn't want to put anything else on top of it. I may go back with some matte gel medium later and put a layer of that on top of the glitter and see how that turns out. Now for this one, I decided to use up my stash of resin flowers. I don't know about you, but I got big into these resin flowers a couple of years ago and I bought gobs of them off Etsy. So I decided this was a great way to use a lot of these up and I get to enjoy them because I love the way they look, but I don't really use them on my projects anymore. So I decided to get some used. I get to enjoy the sight of them every single day on my wall and it made for the coolest letter decoration. This is over the top. Now I'm taking that thick bodied matte gel medium. Again, you're going to want the thick bodied stuff. You want the gel. You want the stuff that's going to really hold these resin flowers into place because they are very solid and there's going to be a lot of them on this letter. So you definitely want to go in thick and heavy with this matte gel medium this time. And so I'm even creating a little bit of texture when I'm putting it down on the letter, almost like little waves or ripples of it. There we go. See, so kind of adding that texture there to help grab the resin flower. I am trying to do a mix of colors and sizes and styles so I don't have big clumps of the same thing together. And I started in the center because I wanted to make sure that However, one end ends up, the other end is similar, and starting in the center generally helps you do that. That way, if I get to the edges and realize I need to leave them a little bit open, then I know I can do the same thing on the other side and leave those a little bit open. I hope that makes sense. I just wanted to make sure they were balanced and even. So I'm not gonna make you watch the entire process of adding all of these resin flowers onto this S, but I wanted to leave in just enough so that you can see that I'm puzzling them together, picking different sizes and shapes, and just kind of trying to fit them together the best I can to fill in as much space as possible. If some of the white background is showing, that's completely okay. That's why I painted them white so that that crisp background could show through if necessary. I do have a big variety of colors and sizes of these particular resin flowers and they're all flat backed. So they will sit nice and flat against that S and they don't have a curved back, which would make it much more difficult, but not impossible to use them. So here's the finished product with this one. I think this one looks so wild and I love it. So that is the S. Next up we have the Y. This is the last letter that I did and it actually, this might be my favorite. It was pretty quick and easy, but you have to keep a couple of things in mind with this one. Now this is tissue paper from Jane Davenport and it's intended to use be used for art journaling and I do use it for that quite frequently. But I'm gonna go ahead and take some matte gel medium, nice thin layer, press down very carefully with the tissue paper on the top of the letter, but I'm gonna wrap this all the way around. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to see more of these girls showing on the letter when it's hanging on the wall, and I really, really liked them. I thought they were super cute. So I'm gonna to continue to use that matte gel medium as an adhesive all over the sides of the letter. I'm very glad that I painted this one in particular because through that tissue paper, you're of course gonna see the background. That doesn't need to be craft. It's gonna make the girls look a little bit different if they have a craft background as opposed to a white background. So depending what look you're going for, that should determine the colors you're using behind the tissue paper. Another thing to keep in mind is this tissue paper comes with two pieces attached to each other. And for this application, you want to pull that top layer off very gently and just use that top layer with the printed design on it. Now I am going to trim off the excess here. I'm gonna do a little bit of collaging on this even because the way I have to put on this Y, it's a little wild, it's a little crazy. It doesn't go on perfectly. I am gonna to have to trim some areas. I'm gonna to have to fold some areas. I'm gonna to have to add in little bits and pieces to make it all work. But the beauty of tissue paper is it doesn't matter. It works. It looks intentional. This is an art journaling technique to do a bit of collage. And so it ends up looking very intentional and I love that. So you've got a little bit of gap in between the two ladies there. And I'm gonna cut off another little piece and just add some more adhesive and collage it into that spot. No problem. And 
it's very sketchy. It's intended to look very sketchy so that you can do things like this. Now, once I get this all trimmed out, get all of my pieces pressed down, I am gonna go ahead and cover the entire thing with another layer of that matte gel medium, again, to seal it in to protect the tissue paper so that it becomes waterproof, it becomes long lasting, not gonna rip as easily. I will warn you that during this technique, I did rip this tissue paper at least once and not intentionally. So please be careful with this one. It is very, very delicate. And so you have to be very gentle, especially when it gets wet after adding the matte gel medium, you need to not touch it. <laughs> Get it where you want it, add the matte gel, leave it alone. That is my best advice for dealing with this tissue paper. Now this crafty DIY is something a little bit different for my channel. I normally do scrapbooking mostly on my channel, but I had a couple of requests to bring in some little crafty DIYs to change it up once in a while. This one is sponsored by a cherry on top. And if you'd like to see detailed still photos and instructions written out, you can check out the cherry blog at a cherry on top.com and click on inspiration. And you will see not only their blog, but also an inspirational project gallery with tons and tons of projects that people have made using products from a cherry on top. I'd love to know if you've tried any of these techniques. Have you ever tried decorating these wonderful paper mache or I've seen them in wood too letters and how did you decorate them? I had a lot of fun with this one and I think it's a tie between this beautiful tissue paper decoupage and the florals on that gorgeous R letter. Those two are absolutely my favorite techniques. They're the ones that were the most fun to do and I think turned out the best overall. If you have any tips, tricks, or crafty ideas you'd like to share with everybody else and with me, or encourage me to try out a project that you've seen and want to see me tackle, please let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. And until next time, bye guys.